Third in the salute to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Hello, roll call of members. Mayor Moore. Here. Trustee Kim Trombley. Here. <coughs> Trustee Greg Martin. Excused tonight. Trustee Steve Southwick. Here. Trustee Amy Garrick. Here. This time I'd uh, entertain a motion to approve the minutes of the previous meeting. So moved. Okay. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Aye, Silas. Okay, and then we'll have a uh, uh, public question period. Does anybody want to bring anything up at this time? Yes. Uh, my name is Todd Manning. Um, I'm a resident of the Village of Champlain. I'm here as a uh, private citizen and as the chairman of the Zoning Board of Appeals of the Village of Champlain. Um, over the last two months, two, mo two months ago, we lost a, uh, one of our members quit, resigned for various reasons. And we have yet to fill that spot. Um, we had a meeting recently where we didn't have enough for a quorum. Uh, I think we should really put this on top of our list uh, to get another member to our board and actually consider getting a second, a sixth member as an, alter an alternate to our board. Uh, we had to delay some opinion, um, some decisions on some businesses coming to town, although small, but still every business counts. Uh, a couple of ideas that I'm thinking of is I know that we all try to get somebody we know or talk to our friends. It's been a normal procedure, myself included. That's how I got here. I showed up at board and said the wrong thing. <laughs> uh, um, <laughs> but um, I think maybe a, uh, an avenue we should research is maybe uh, advertising in North Countryman and maybe in the, the uh, Press Republican. You see a member and get a bunch of people in and pick your best candidate. Uh, but I really believe through diversity will become strength. And I think through intellectual debate, we have to make better decisions and ideas. That's all I got to say. Well, honestly, to comment on that, Todd, we, I have had a lot of trouble getting someone to come forward and, and um, be, be a member of the zoning board. And I would just like to take this time to, to say we would entertain anyone who wished to be on there. We would consider them. Uh, if you know anyone or anyone here knows someone that would be interested, I would, I'm open to suggestions for sure. Let's hope we are successful. Thank you. And thank you for the job you're doing. Oh. <laughs> I didn't realize how hard it was <laughs> to get people to do that. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, Greg Fleming was supposed to be here tonight, but he's not. Uh, so we'll move on to Mike Tatro and the Code Enforcement Officer report. Well, the only thing I have to report on is we did have a planning board hearing for a strategic land in the industrial park and that's moving forward. They've got all their OKs, building permits and plans are all going to be forthcoming but they plan on breaking ground this fall, at least doing the site work and then continue with the building. Um, the other thing I just want to reiterate what Todd said, very important, we have to do better than try to get somebody. We have to get somebody. We have meetings every month and it's absolutely necessary that we get somebody on the zoning board. I mean, we can't function without it. Other than that, that's all I have for now. Very good. Thanks, Mike. Can we ask any questions now? or yeah, If you've got some questions, you can fire away. <coughs> okay. Uh, I have a concern with the Building 13 right on the corner of um, Main Street and Elm. The building with the ceiling, is the roof is falling in. They had replaced the tin and the brick building that didn't take the buyout in the flood. That's empty. Is that the one by the bridge over right here? Right by the bridge. Okay. It's getting worse, and, and my concern is there's a lot of kids in that area, mine uh, included, um, but that roof looks like it's going to give, and the pigeons are really loving that soft spot right now, and they are just living there and making it softer. Um, I think that we need to address that building, and I would assume that it is in major violation of all codes, and we should look at condemning that building. I can't go through the process, but the village has to be willing to, to foot the bill on this because, again, this is going to be a legal issue. We've already got one now that's been going on since February, and I have not been successful with that one. So, 
I mean, I'm more willing to write. on that other one? I'm still waiting for Mr. Keeble to give us an answer. And that's been since last February that that's been going right. on. So. Way too long. I mean, I'm willing to do the paperwork, but like I said, when you start condemning buildings, that's going to cost some money. And that's basically, I mean, these buildings are owned by out-of-town landlords. Right. There's not only that one, there's three, four other ones around, and I've sent letters and in the past to them and I don't get any response. I can't, every time you try and call these people, it's a unlisted number or it, there's a million reasons why. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's very hard to do, but I'm willing to put the time in it, but. Well, he had fixed that one section of the roof, had put on the tin yeah, there. Yeah, on the back side, I saw right. that. Right, I mean, he did do that but when we addressed that with him, I think a year ago. Yeah. Um, so I didn't know whether, you know, he would be responsive. I mean, it was kind of crazy not to take the buyout in the first place. But it's a danger when you go around the back of that building, you look up, oh, yeah. it's a whole straight through. Yeah. I've been back there and I've looked at the doors and, you know, it, it, definitely people can get in there. There's oh, no yeah. doubt about it. Oh, I mean, yeah. it, it is a, a hazard for sure. And I'll look into it, send them some letters and see what happens. And hopefully we'll get some action. But it, it's <laughs> a I hard know. sell. I know. I know Have you had any response from uh, the place across from the... Catholic Church. The old Papio building? Yeah. The gentleman that was going to buy that has informed me this past month that he's not buying anything. Everything he has in the town and in the village of Rouse's Point is up. It's a tax auction now. So I have to go back to the previous landowners that I've talked to them in the past. and They were responding. I mean, they did board, I mean, block up the one side right. when I asked them to. But now I'm going to have to get after them to, to close in those windows. Along with the one on the corner of the, where Church Street and Main, the old fire station, mm -hmm. that's got some yeah, windows that are open. And, the, are and hit, I did send him a letter earlier this year for the windows, and the, the grass and the brush and all the stuff in the back. But again, I got no response from him. So. And they had started renovating that building, and then all of a sudden it uh, stopped and pulled out. That may have been before me, but I didn't see anything there was going on in the summer. No, it wasn't the summer. It was uh, what last year. I don't know, time flies so fast. Anyway, they had started and then it stopped and now those windows are open and yeah. I'm sure kids are having a grand old time in that oh, building yeah. as well. Yeah. And uh, I mean, we're just setting ourselves up for lawsuits here. We, yeah. We've got to close in the bottoms of these buildings. I'll send some more letters out. Thanks, Mike. <laughs> thank you. Any other questions for Mike? No, thank you, Mike. Yeah. <coughs> uh, mayor's report. I just want to report that we have uh, two more pickup days, October 24th and November 7th. Uh, remind everybody to bring their debris to the road. Uh, if it's not by the road, we won't pick it up. Uh, we will only pick up leaves, branches smaller than three inches, and general yard debris. Please be sure that no other waste material are place, is placed in those bags. Uh, just the other one thing I wanted to comment about is yeah, of course, as everyone's probably heard, the closing at Wyeth. Uh, fortunately, it's going to be over a few years, but it's time now for us to act. I, I think we're fortunate that we have a good, a good board here. We've got good people working for the village. You know, if we make the right moves now, we can probably help ourselves greatly. So I know the village of Ross's Point and the town of Champlain are all, we're all in the same boat. And we have formed a task committee that we're going to try to do all we can, try to get other people in there and try to get assistance for people. Uh, you know, every, everyone is on board that we want to do the best we can. And uh, just want to reiterate, we're fortunate to have a good group of people here and we'll have to do what we can to maintain our services as best we can with whatever loss of revenue that we suffer. And my heart goes out to everyone that is affected by this. Uh, that you know, takes care of my report. Uh, does anybody have any questions on that? Okay, we'll move to uh, Trustee Trombley's report. Um, all I had was um, to reiterate what Todd and Mike said too about getting some more people um, <laughs> for the zoning board. I sat here Wednesday night too. So. Um, the zoning board, not this past meeting because obviously there wasn't a quorum so they weren't able to do anything, but uh, 
the meeting of the 14th of September, they had quite a bit of activity. Um, they had the, the public hearing of Price Chomper, Groggy Inc. was in. Um, Living Waters Baptist Church has pulled their application. Looks like they're not going to be building right now um, on the parcel of land that they were going to. Um, other than that, that's about it. Any questions for Kim? Uh, thanks, Kim. Uh, Trustee Southwood? I don't have anything this month. Everything is covered under new and old business. Okay, thank you. Very good. Uh, Trustee Gary? I have a few things. Um, apologize for missing last month's meeting. Uh, first of all, we are going to hold another um, Halloween party for the kids in our community, ages 0 to 12. And uh, it'll be at St. Mary's Academy again. They have graciously allowed us to have that space. Uh, and we'll hold it from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. on October 29th. Uh, you must come in a costume, be original, be more fun. We'll have games and food and, you know, be fun. So just trying to keep, you know, community activity happening. And I uh, wanted to discuss with all of you, if you like this idea, I know I mentioned it to Jeff, but um, I'd like, because I'm seeing a lot of our homes have decorated for Halloween, to have a Halloween decorating contest too. Go around and just name someone to be the winner, because there's some houses that are really kind of creative, and I think that'd be kind of fun to do. I don't know if you guys are interested in putting it out there. Something different. Well, I was thinking, you know, we could probably just have <coughs> certificates so we could do something up on a computer yeah. and say first prize, second prize. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, hopefully get a little publicity, get their picture of their house in the paper and just a little bit more, you know, Champlain. I mean, we're cleaning up around here. We're looking good. Just enough something to keep our name out there. So, yay. Thank you, Jeff. Okay, so we're going to officially now <laughs> <laughs> have a uh, Halloween judging contest. So between, I will say, October 28th, Friday night, um, and the 31st, uh, the houses will be judged. So if you have lights or whatever, have them on and be ready for whomever will come around and judge it. And I will get some people to do that. Um, and then we will announce it at our next meeting. Okay, I don't think nope. we need to do a motion for that. That's because nope. it's not going to spend any funds. No funds. No funds. I don't spend okay. any. <laughs> nope. Um, Court of building. Uh, also wanted to get your feedback on, and I guess we could do that under new old business. So I'll wait on that. That's for the premier. I have questions for you all on that. And other than that, I'm good. Okay. Oh, I need an executive session for personnel issues. Okay, well, I was going to. I was going to see if we oh, could have one at the end of the meeting anyway. But okay, very good. At the end of the meeting, we'll, that's we'll, fine. We'll, we'll have a vote on that. Yep. Uh, well, actually, we could vote on that right now if you'd like. I'll second that. Okay. Uh, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? The ayes have it. Okay. <coughs> Move on to the report of the clerk charger. Um, expense and revenue reports have been reported for the board. We have also did our October bill, our September 30 billing for water and sewer. The amount for water is $42,922.55 and SOAR is $68,196.42. And we've also mailed out delinquency notices for the property taxes that need to be paid by November 1st. That's all I have. Okay, th thank you, Juanita. Are there any questions? Okay, uh, presentation of warrant and payment. Uh, I would entertain a motion to uh, pay the warrant. Make a motion. Second? Second. Okay, is there any discussion? Uh, I had a couple questions. Uh, the, and Woody, if probably you can answer this. There, there were several tire repairs. Did we blow out all the tires on every equipment this month? No. Uh, there were four separate tire repairs. One um, for the Bobcat. It said Bobcat. Then it just said 1187 tire repair. Then it said Bayshard's tire repair. And then it said Dragoon's tire repair. Three different vehicles. There were four expenses. Uh, two were on the Jackos. 
One was on the truck and one was on this fixture. Okay, so did we get a new tire or just repair the old? Uh, repair it all old. We bought one new tire in an emergency purchase with just, uh, the mayor's approval. Okay. That was a two hundred dollar bill. So for bedroom. repairing tires, you've got one here for two hundred fifteen dollars. Well, pretty much two sixteen. One for two sixty four. One for one twenty one. It, it's kind of pricey in tire repairs, isn't it? Mm. Probably should. I was just curious. I mean, to me, I thought it was kind of high prices well, for repairs. Front tires for back the the backhoes are approximately one hundred seventy five to two hundred dollars a piece. New. New. Right, but we yeah, have you repairs. Re you replaced one. Okay, so that was Bay Shards that you replaced? That bill was 264 And then we repaired one tire at 1187 for the dump truck. That was the dump truck? And then there was a skid steer repair tire. There was a Dragoon repair of 15 That was the... Uh, That's uh, Dragoons 21590. That was the. That front was the tire. front tire for the John Deere. And that was replaced or just fixed? That was replaced. Sorry, that's me ignore it. No, that's me. I'm not ignoring it. Oh, okay. Um, so then the 264 Bay Shards? Yes. And the 264 was not tired. Okay, that's what it says. It says tire repair. No, that was one was a tube, I believe, and the other was an approved purchase for a. Uh, Maybe I let it wrong. Sure. One was a tube for fourteen dollars. Mhm. Mm that's two fifty left. And two hundred fifty dollars, two hundred fifty-five dollars for the kit for the hydraulic and ditch after that was approved at the last meeting. Okay, thank you. Okay, and. There were two mileage reimbursements on you, Woody. Um, Should be only one. Exact amount. One came out of 201 F8 8310. Didn't know if this was just a double booking. And one came out of 8110, the 20 and 70 each. Both said 201. I think they were split for water and sewer. Okay. Because so of 57 the, uh, for that trip. Okay. Yes. That's all I have. There was only one trip that was split between gotcha. two or ten. Okay, are there any other questions on the warrant? Uh, okay, if not, we'll proceed to vote. Uh, Trustee Tomlin? Aye. Trustee Southwick? Aye. Trustee Gary? Aye. Trustee Moore, or <laughs> Mayor Moore? Uh, aye. Alrighty, then we have some uh, purchase orders to vote on this month. Uh, first is Reliable office supply and easel in a box of 24 3 inch by 3 inch by 37 inch tubes for plans. For a total of let's see, 100. <laughs> <laughs> for 178.99 and uh, 63.92. Okay, I'd entertain a motion to. Pay this purchase order. Can we discuss after we make the motion. Okay. okay. Well, I'll make the motion. Second. Okay. Is there any discussion? Yeah, I think this is an outrageous amount of money for an easel, something that can be built. Uh, we're talking about a simple easel. What is this for? Who's asking for it? I'm talking about something when we have planning board or zoning board meetings. People don't have to hold plans like this and point around to the front. I mean, we've got to have some equipment here to put these meetings on with. Can our guys make you an easel? I, I mean, that I don't know. I mean, we it looked, seems like a lot for an easel. We looked through all the different catalogs, and that was about the cheapest we could find. Some of them were three, four. I mean, I wouldn't yeah, spend three hundred dollars on them, but a simple easel, three little metal legs, and a, a thing was one hundred fifty, one hundred sixty bucks. I know it's a lot of money, but man, we, we've got to have some. I don't have any boxes to put any. The building plans that we get in here, I got my desk is a, a laptop for all these plans that we have. No place to put anything. We gotta have a way of keeping track of this stuff because these are records we're gonna be keeping. So 
it would accommodate a three foot by three foot by thirty seven inch. There are the easel. They, no, this is the the, the, the boxes. They're square yeah. boxes. There's those are probably wouldn't use as many. I thought it was the, the smaller ones we were going to get. We're, we are, but they didn't have to be on a purchase request. Oh. These are over the fifty dollar limit. That's why you have to approve it. Oh. Yeah, there's some plans that are two foot wide, and there's some that are three foot wide. That's what the, the difference in the boxes are. Unfortunately, you got to buy 50 at a time. I don't think it was, I think it's 24. 24? Yeah. Okay. And do you think that they could make you an easel that would be satisfactory? Oh, I have no idea. I you're here. Do you think you can build an easel? I mean, Woody, do you think your guys can build can, an easel? I mean, it seems like such a simple thing. We can look into it and I don't think it'd be that difficult. The, the other thing with an easel, it also came with a, one of these marking boards where you can use right. these crayons or whatever. Yeah. I mean, when you're doing a presentation, it's nice to have something there. Sure. I mean, look at all these things we have on the wall. People come here and they stand up and hold the stuff and try and direct what they're trying to do. I mean, to me, it's very unprofessional. I would think that the village can afford 150 bucks for an easel. Mm -hmm. Well, just hoping. we've had huge expenses lately, and you know we're going to be running out of money before Christmas at this rate of our spending. That's all. And I just thought 179 dollars for an easel seems astronomical to me. I can't imagine that price, so that's why I'm questioning it. I, I think it's astronomical. That's just me. I mean, I have no problem with getting an easel and getting what we need, but uh, can hey, we find one a little bit better price? You're, you're the keeper of the funds, not me. I don't have to check. Well, it. Like you say, this is the, you know, it comes. It's not just an easel. It has like a, a well, it comes with a whiteboard, yeah. you know, right in yeah, the marker. Th that's what the came with it. I mean, I wasn't looking for that specifically, but in the price range, the way they ran, that seemed to be the, the best one for the money in the, all the catalogs that we looked through. Okay. We seem to be having quite a few well, meetings, and you know, <laughs> I mean, it's very hard without it. Okay. Uh, is there any further discussion on this then? Trustee Chowdhury. Um, I have a question. Yeah. Uh, I'm Trustee Chowdhury. Hi. Trustee Chowdhury. Hi. Trustee Gary. No. Mayor Moore. I. Okay. Uh, motion carries. I also have a purchase order here for a new chainsaw. I guess our eight-year-old chainsaw broke down. Uh, we have two quotes. The lowest quote is $291.20. Uh, I would entertain a motion to buy a new chainsaw. I'll make a motion. Okay. Second. Second. Any discussion? Yeah, I, I have some. Just so that my uh, accounting is clear here, we have after this purchase, we have about less than $500 left in this account. Is that what you're saying? That's the balance. Okay. So it's 5510. Yeah. Correct? Right. Right. So the, the budgeted now is 6000 and the actual balance right now is 5510 Before the purchase. Before the purchase. Okay. That's the only question I have. I didn't read that correctly. And my only comment, you know, we're blowing through equipment. I see it is eight years old, but it seems that I would really like to have more accountability as taking care of equipment. The whole trigger Maybe mechanism. We just happened to be falling into all our equipment falling apart all of a sudden. <laughs> but well, the whole trigger mechanism for a current chainsaw just disintegrated. It happens. <laughs> and that's eight years is a long time for chainsaw. That was purchased right around the time of the ice storm, and it's been used a lot. Mm -hmm. Okay, is there any further discussion? If not, Trustee Trombley? Aye. Trustee Southwick? Aye. Trustee Gary? Aye. Mayor Moore? Aye. Okay. The other, the other thing we had is our magnetic lo pipe locator is has been broken. And we're not sure exactly what it would cost, but not to exceed $200 to repair. Uh, how much is a new one worth? Uh, approximately eight hundred dollars. Okay. How old is that? Anyway? Over oh, ten years. Sorry. Over ten years old. Can make a motion. <laughs> uh, 
I'll make a motion. Second. Second. Okay. We have discussion. Uh, Woody, I'm uh, Sorry, how old did you say that was? It's over 10 years old, probably close to 15 or 16. So and it's just the electronics it and it just up and quit. They replace the batteries and it just makes a whining sound. Does it perform satisfactorily or should, you know, is there something better out there that we should be looking at or is this? For, for a magnetic locator, that's sufficient. We're just looking for valve boxes and manhole covers and buried under the dirt. We need to look at something else that can <laughs> okay. Well, is there any other discussion on this repair of the uh, pipe locator? So you don't you don't just use the backhoe to find the pipe? No, that's not a right. <laughs> <laughs> Never. That's, mag that's magnetic. <laughs> nice big frowns on that when you hit your gas line. Well, that's plastic though. <laughs> Okay, uh, <laughs> Justy Chauvin? Aye. Justy Southwick? Aye. Justy Geard? Aye. Fairmore, aye. Aye, Sarver? Okay, I think we had this... Uh, okay, the di this uh, Walker diaphragm pump, that's the mud sucker. Uh, we had to do an emergency purchase of this. Uh, and as it turned out, it was timely because we had a water main break shortly thereafter, so uh, anyway, I would entertain a motion to uh, pay for the Walker diaphragm pump. So moved. Second. Is there any discussion? Um, we, we have two quotes here, the same price, one from Essex Rail and one from Midstate. Is there one that's shipping is cheaper on this? Yes, Midstate was. Okay. Delivered to the door. And we do realize that we had a budgeted amount of twenty-eight thousand in this account. We are now, with this expenditure, down to three thousand nine hundred sixteen dollars. The twenty-eight thousand is misleading because that money was put in the purchase fee trackless machine. Twenty-two thousand. Okay. What were we originally? Twenty-two. Twenty-two was transferred. So originally we were budgeted for six thousand. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. And five hundred and I forget whatever the five hundred some odd dollars was reimbursed by the insurance company. Right. Five ninety-five. Thank you. Only Trustee Trombley? Aye. Trustee Southwood? Aye. Trustee Garrett? Aye. Mayor Moore, aye. Motion, motion is carried. Okay, that takes care of our bills. We'll have a report with the superintendent. Mm, any questions on our monthly report? We can address those first. How do we know when we need to repair a water meter? After the basically after reading the meters, okay. and we find it's either the same, same numbers. That's the quickest way to tell. Uh, Donna usually does up a listing, and it's just passed on through the chain to have them repaired. Yeah, I'd like to commend the crew on that. What do you? Uh, I guess we've made good headway on repairing those, and that's big plus I mean we charge by usage and to have the meters up mostly in working order is a very good thing. Uh, what do you have a question under your general um, you mentioned about a trailer hitch missing for the pickup no one has seen it and two mobile radios missing when did we discover these things were missing and where are we at in finding them? Um, it was in the time frame of September when we Use the truck for hauling the trailer. Mm -hmm. Couldn't find the slide in hitch. Searched the garage, couldn't find it. Looked in cabinets, looked behind the seats. Have no idea what it is. And is it something that is not kept on the truck? The hitch isn't kept attached to the truck? No, it's removed because it's a smacks you in the shins when you walk around the back of the truck. <laughs> okay. And mobile radios, isn't this something that everybody carries on them every no, day? No, these are permanent mount radios. Okay. And there were two left over that the village owned from the police department. They were here a couple well, years ago, a oh, year and a half ago. Uh -huh. uh, we have one in the office. Mm -hmm. There was actually three at one time. And went to look for them because I was going to install them. And all I could find was the antenna and the wires to hook them up. And everybody, part of the crew that's handled them or seen them, has looked throughout the building high or low. We can't find them.
box it looks good. I want to tell you, I like the grading that came out. Came out really good. You can't see anything now, it's all underwater. Yeah, well. The uh, uh we're getting there. Yeah, I think it's gonna be nice. At least it's good heavy clay that's on the bank to keep it from <laughs> washing in. Uh training class for water operators, I believe I sent a memo to all of you. Uh, I went around and put up a sign-up sheet, then went around and asked everybody in the crews as to what their decisions are, but we do need a backup water operator, preferably two or a couple of them. We cannot, uh, the most anybody can do with the system now is monitor chlorine levels. They cannot add any chemicals or anything to the system unless they're a certified operator. Let's do it. Make we're going to bring that up on your new business. Oh, okay. That's yeah. fine. okay. Uh, my concern is, I don't know where we're going to find the funding for this because the water's account is taking a pretty big hit with all the repairs that we've been doing over the summer. There's a free class in Plattsburgh in November. I'm dealing with uh, chemical injection pumps. I'm gonna set, I'd like to send Larry Sorrell and Mike Rock to this. It's just during regular working hours. It's put on roof by rural water. It'll benefit both those individuals. Any motion for that? Mm, I don't think so. I'm just. No, I think you know, it's during working hours and it doesn't incur any additional expenses. So. Strategic Lens is starting this week. I was informed by their engineer or their site supervisor. We're starting on the 19th, we're going to start doing the grade work. Unfortunately, they will be cutting Pocket Boulevard to run a water line. That was the one lot that did not have a line installed when they built the road. Is there, has their building permit been issued? They, they have a permit for to do the site work. Okay. As they give me the drawings for the foundation and the buildings after they're reviewed, we're going to modify the permits for different phases. And who is it that's going to be cutting across? The Conway Conway contractors. Okay. And they're going to put it back to the nice. We will have a representative there, there to uh, ensure that it's done properly. Yeah, it's nice they can really put your prospect tail on the ever was really put back. So we really need to watch that. Now which side is the water on? Is it on the west side? It's on the west side and the building's going on the east side. Because you're going to have to deal with the gas pipeline as well. Yes. Mm -hmm. On the east side. Right? What's that? Crosses over there? It crosses over into the side of the driveway by uh, Danzas. Okay. That's uh, that's the contractor's situation. Oh, yeah. And they, they're going to notify the phone company with that because I know they told them that they were underground. Okay. Things up there. I We need, enough, need to look at getting a accurate pipe location machine. Uh, Mr. Southwick's familiar with it. They use it for tracing wires under the ground. Ours was a hand-me-down from NYSEG about nine, ten years ago when they came through the gas lines. It can read a pipe underground from maybe here to the wall, then it quits. We cannot trace it any more than 20 feet at most on a good day. Unfortunately, again, it's the water account that uses this. And we're looking at about anywhere from $900 to $1,200. How does that attach to what's its source? From the starting point, is it the we can itself? attach it to the hydrant uh, curb box, valve box in the road. <coughs> then it would send a signal down, and you go down with your wand and follow your pipe and mark it. It's actually a necessity for UFPO mm -hmm. for anybody that's doing any type of digging. Because if we mark it wrong and they hit it, we have to fix it and we have to eat the cost. If we mark it right and they hit it, they have to pay for the repairs. Right. So that one can't be fixed though, Woody. The one we have. It's a fissure and it's approximately 22 years old. I can look at it, possibly getting it fixed, but right now I'm going to be getting quotes and doing some field trials with, with a couple, with probably five or six vendors. You want to get back to us uh, before next month and so we can consider that? I'm just making you aware of this because it's, it's an expensive item, but it's in this 
necessary and it will last for a long time. How many locates do you do a week or a month a week? I do at least two locates a week. Anybody that digs in the ground has to notify USPO by law now, even a homeowner. So we're out at, at least twice a week somewhere. You know, some weeks we're not out at all. The following week we could be out four times. And for our own, our, lo our own locations of just trying to find service lines to houses. Okay, you anything else with it? Classes. We had a, uh, Browser's Point is possibly getting rid of their, well they will be getting rid of their plow truck. And we will be in the need of a sander probably by midwinter. Ours is, I don't know the exact age, there's no date on it. But it, when you pick it up now, it is so weak it twists from the salt and sand wearing and tearing on it. Rouse's Point has a truck and stainless steel sander. It's an 89 truck, which I went over and looked at it. I've looked at their maintenance records. It's a well-maintained vehicle. They've replaced a lot of parts, airlines, air tank, fuel tanks. It's a 10-speed Royal Ranger. And the pricing that I've heard is around $10,000. It would be to our benefit to purchase the whole unit. Because the sander is going to run this anywhere from six to $8,000. And they have a stainless steel sander. Ours is not stainless steel now. And it lasts about four and a half, five years. And we're replacing it at the tune of six to $8,000. How and far would that get us out there, Woody, how, how long would you expect a vehicle like that to last us? With that truck and our current truck, we can probably get out seven more years before we'd have to repair, replace anything. The sander should last us considerably longer if we wash it and maintain it properly. In the meantime, we'll be able to put money aside for replacements without having to go to any BANs or bonding to purchase a vehicle. We can actually budget X amount of dollars every year to start repl replacing vehicles. Do you know why Ross's Point is getting rid of that one? They budgeted for it over the past four years, three, four years, to replace that truck. And when the next, when the last year's budget came through, they ordered it. They had the money set aside and it took a little bit out of all the accounts to pay for the truck. They bought a Cadillac of Sanders, put it all in one box. They can use it all year round as a dump truck. Come sanding time, they move a slide and it turns into a sander. But they plan over the years to do that, and right now we're not in a position to. We could recoup some of the monies that we spend on the truck by surplusing our current truck, our oldest truck. Is that, is that going to go for a bit? This runs a new business or what? Well, we can, uh, that's, that's going to be under new business. So. I think it's but if you have a question for Woody now, I yeah, believe we're, we're working on an inter, inter municipal sale. Okay. Eliminating the bid process, I'm like, not like the uh, Delta Press. Yeah. Where would the money come from? Well, that was my question to the board. <laughs> <laughs> a tree up, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Woods, Woods high right now. <laughs> yeah. Probably worth more than the truck. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Juanita, could you uh, tell us what funds you might have available for that? For that and the schooling that we need to do. <laughs> Not right off the top of my head. <laughs> well, could could you check that before yeah. we get to do business? So we, cause I'm right, we are going to ask that question. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think I've covered every. Oh, I have one other thing. We do not have a Sears credit card for the village. The prices on tools and the warranty on tools is well worth it. Yes, it, is. it is probably 40 to 50 percent cheaper than buying from Snap On. It's just the expense of going to Plattsburgh to pick it up. It's still cheaper. I priced some uh, cordless drills. Through Lowe's with our credit card, it was $77. I was able to pick, well, with the assistance of some people here, I was able to get one for $60. Free of charge. For the same quality <laughs> no mileage. <laughs> no mileage. 
whether it be hand tools, power tools, the warranties are just, you can't beat it, and the price is if you catch them right with the sales. It's to the benefit of the village instead of paying less price in most other locations. And a lot of times with the card, they offer additional discounts when you use the card. I think it would definitely be a benefit for us to go ahead and get one. And whose name would that be? be the village. Village, village of Champlain. That's what we're listed there now. Okay, and we could keep it in the safe and only yep. break it out when we need it? Exactly. Okay. Uh, okay, I'll we'll put that on your new business. Okay. Wait, I just want one final question if we're all set on that. Sure. Can you run over with me the documentation that we received about our uh, water certification and, and what we have versus what we need. Is that part of this training thing that we're talking about? Uh, what question don't... What question do you have? We have well, a there's two we certifications. We have, we have a 2B operator right now. Yes. Yeah, I understand Larry is 2B. Right. right. And we're in need of... We need to have a minimum of a, a grade C operator Okay. to back him up. Okay. It doesn't make any sense to send somebody all the way to school to take the training for grade C when you can take the great training for grade B for the same amount of money it's going to cost to go down there. There's a hundred dollars difference in class for the class, the learning class, but the, the time and travel and everything would be the same and it would prepare everybody for the 2B license. They could get their C license at six months. And at the end of a year, they'd be able to get their B license. Okay. But all we need is a grade D to go with the grade 2B. We have a grade D for water maintenance. Correct. Well, it's somewhere between here and Plattsburgh. Yeah, that's not a water maintenance. plant operator. That's a systems maintenance. A systems maintenance operator. Oh, okay. We need both. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's separate. Huh? Okay. So why would anybody want to see whatever it is then? Some. Some areas have a grade C operating system. Okay. It goes by the type of system you have. It depends on the number of people you serve just in and the process that you use to purify the water. Okay. And what's, in your opinion, the difference in the curriculum between the, the C and the 2B? Is it, is a little bit more, more technical in dealing with the, uh, the chlorination and the, uh, they talk a little bit more about filtration the things, the biological aspects of the water, the minerals in the water. Okay. We got a lot of those. Yeah. <laughs> Just minerals. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> lots of minerals. <laughs> it's a little bit more in-depth training. And they also deal with a little more of the hydraulics, the pumping your heads. Okay. Thank you. You have anything else? I right? think I've covered everything on my list. Any other Any questions, questions for Woody? Superintendent. I'm not ignoring you over there. <laughs> okay, if not, we'll move on to correspondence. Okay, we have a letter of thanks that we wrote to Clinton County Probation Department. Correspondence two. Correspondence to Robert Frenier at Border Industrial Park LLC regarding water meter installation. Correspondence to GSA regarding U.S. Port of Entry Water and Sewer. Correspondence four, correspondence from Clinton County Health Department regarding certification of water, of water operators. Correspondence from NICON regarding NIMAR insurance. Correspondence from New York State Office of Parks and Recreation and Historic Preservation regarding the grant extension for the Riverfront Park Project. Correspondence from James Menard. NCCS Buildings and Ground Supervisor regarding a credit on the sewer part of their October billing. Correspondence from Doug Ferris relative to cost estimate and final plan review of Horizon Heights project. Correspondence from Trident Insurance regarding insurance coverage. Correspondence from GLLP Incorporated regarding maintenance contract for the pump. We have a memo from Attorney Keeble requesting purchase the General Code Legislation Library CD. Correspondence from Clinton County Health Department regarding the boil water order and subsequent letter listing the boil water order. Correspondence from Teamsters Local 687 informing the village of the employee's withdrawal from the union. And press release relative to the first meeting held after Wyatt Pharmaceuticals closing announcement. 
Okay, thanks, Juanita. Uh, we will now move on to old business. Uh, grant writers, Amy, do you have something there? Um, yeah, I wanted to get your feel. Part of the grant, we're supposed to be putting in um, benches and trees. And I started looking at things, and I kind of wanted to get an idea. Uh, Woody had said that he wanted wood benches. Um, huh? Oh, uh, well, so it's easier to fix and repair. And so I just kind of want to get your feeling on what kind of benches are you looking at? Um, what do you want me to look at? I found some deals where they're partially metal and then wood slat seats. I don't know how secure those are, how they'll hold up in weather. It, um, so what direction do you want to go, if you have any direction for me to look? This is the time to look for benches, clearance prices. Well, the only question I would have on a wooden bench, are we going to be able to adequately secure that so it doesn't end up in the river? I, I, was, think planning, be. I was planning on drilling holes, putting a piece of SDR sewer pipe down with an eye bolt and chain them at each end where the benches were going to be installed. So there would just be two eye bolts with chains holding the bench in that location. Same thing for the picnic tables. And do we want to stick with benches or do we want to, you know, because picnic tables are part of this too, do we want to put in the picnic tables and anchor them and skip benches? You know, a lot of people were using that space this summer and I was thinking if we throw in a couple picnic benches that would be kind of nice. Well, we definitely need to put some things down there that people can sit down. I, right. I noticed a lot of people sitting on the grass, which oh, yeah. is okay sometimes, but I'm sure some people would rather sit on the benches that would look a lot better. Yeah. I think that's part of the grant. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And we do yeah. have several books that I've been seeing with those types of Oh, things good. I've been looking on the internet. That's yeah, what so I've been doing. Come in and take, take oh, okay. Great. So I don't know if any of you have opinions or just want me to go ahead and get pricing and bring that to you and pick and choose. Anybody have any preferences? Well, I was thinking, why, why don't you and Woody get together and pick out what you think would okay. be feasible? And I'd, I'd be good with that. Is there yeah. getting you okay. See? Okay. I, Let's look a bit down there. Like I think the question is. about grant writers was grant writers' company. Oh, that, oh, that part, yes. Yeah. This, uh, oh, I was oh. talking about the grant. Uh, the grant writers. Oh, that was on business well, also. Awesome. Yeah. Park, Park, Park Grants was number four. Yeah. So the grant writers, it was supposed to be discussed at the last meeting, but obviously I wasn't able to make it because of my surgery. Um, so at this time, I would like us to discuss whether we want to pursue having um, the grant writers look into getting us some funding. Uh, they're asking, they keep calling to see, they're willing to, you know, work with us and write as much as they can into grants. Um, you know, I think it's something that we really should take a look at. And they've been writing grants for their town. I mean, the guys that are writing this have the experience. He himself is a, um, is a village mayor, um, and they've been able to get several grants. And they're willing to work with us because they want to use us as a prototype to refer the business so they can get other municipalities to, you know, buy in to write for grants. And we don't have a grant writer. No one has the time to write the grants. Well, I'd, I'd like to table that till next month. We're, we're going to be meeting, was it next week, Woody? No, this Wednesday, 1 o'clock. What's oh, this Wednesday? Yes, sir. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> We're going to be meeting with some representatives of New York State, and they're they're going to give us a heads up on where we stand as far as they have a, a, a waiting list for projects, and it all depends on how needy you are and, and various things. You get collect like points right. for various things. Right. They talk about so that. we're going to get a heads up of how realistically close we are to any of these things, and then maybe we could. Uh, if, we, if it looks like we're close, maybe, or I say close, but able to get something, then maybe we should do that. Uh, they're, they're, right, they're going to be able to give us a good heads up on... Yeah, they're going to go over it. We have currently four applications on file. I didn't realize this. And I didn't realize it either. I'd, I'd like to add something, too, that I think I'm going to beat Mike to the punch here, but when, when, we, when we look further into the shared services thing, uh, and that's under new business, uh, I think we're going to be able to to work something out here where we may be able to utilize a grant writer and use uh, Senator Little's input, maybe even uh, a member item, to help us uh, do a study on what would be feasible. Right, that, and that's another 
avenue of opportunity that's available. I don't know, is that what you wanted to? No, I, actually, I, I don't know if the village got a copy of it or not, but I received some mail in town today. There's a meeting October 25th that has to do with Clinton and Essex County and um, waterfront development program, similar to what Rouse's Point got, where it's a seminar showing how you can apply for different grants if you were interested in it. And uh, I know the town has no waterfront projects going on or downtown revitalizations, but it would be something the village may want to look at. And I, I know there's a meeting in Plattsburgh October 25th. I still have the, the, the paper in the office up there if anybody's interested in it. I'm sure it's, it's the same here or even in town. Uh, would you be interested in attending that, Amy? Or? Um, I had to check. Is it daytime? I believe it's 4 p.m. if I remember right. I can uh, make a copy and leave it in your box here if you want. Yeah, that'd be great. Where did it come from? I, I can't remember no, the exact name, but. Get this. Oh, okay. I, I don't remember the exact name, but I do remember reading about the. It was addressed to the planning chair, you know, so information that we get and seminars that come up and this and that. But it did address, uh, you know, waterfront projects and whatnot, downtown revitalization and other things. But okay, okay so that that answer your question. I mean, we could find out a little bit more information. Okay. Well, I, know, I, I know. So I let them know where we're at. We yeah, I know we put them off, them off a little bit. But we have the, these two things pending that. Yep, that's fine. We'll probably impact where we're headed with this. Uh, the Trombley siding, uh, Woody, how are we coming on that? Oh, we need. I need the information that you have pigeonholed for me. I hope. But you have, you have talked to her, so yeah. she's yeah. okay. I've talked to her in the last week and a half. That has been over a year, I think. Um, It'll be cleaned up. Uh, meters, manholes, uh, we did get a letter back from GSA, uh, they haven't fully addressed our issues, uh, they've also approached the town and the village about their wastewater line, uh, uh, that's not probably going to be settled soon, but we are looking into that, the, the uh, cable franchise, I think, Kim, do we have anything on that? Really? I haven't heard a thing from the village of Elsa's uh, Point or the town. I don't think maybe you could bring that up when, when you're there. I, we had hoped to pool our resources on that for, to meet with the town and, and the village of Ross's Point so that we all... For the cable? For mm -hmm. the cable, to, so we all are on the same page with that. Uh, it doesn't make sense for all of us to go in our different directions on no, that. I, I thought they had talked about doing that, but... Everything has sort of jumped the tracks here this past week, so I haven't heard any more about it either. If so. you do, Mickey, can you yeah. let me know? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, the abolition of the justice position, I answered, we are still waiting some information uh, from our lawyer. We're going to try and do that for this year. If not, we can't. We'll put, if we do uh, try to do it this year, we'll have to probably do a, a special referendum, which would be like an election on the people would vote on the referendum. And in light of the cost of that, that may be a, a good thing for us. But in any event, uh, bring, we'll table that for next time. Uh, okay, new business. Uh, I would entertain a motion to send uh, Superintendent Kissel to uh, Fred Pryor's seminar for supervisors. I make a motion. Second. Uh, any discussion? You ever been to one of those before, Woody? <laughs> yes. About 18 years ago. That's beautiful. Maybe 20 years ago. Well, you're ready for a refresher, then. <laughs> <laughs> I've been to them, too. <laughs> okay. Uh, then no further discussion. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? I used to have it. Uh, well, I entertain a motion for the 2006 legislation library CD requested by Attorney Keeble. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? The ayes have it. 
Uh, at this time, I'd like to name a committee to study shared services. I guess we had got derailed on this also. Uh, I'd, I'd like to put uh, Greg Martin and Steve Southwick on that committee. Uh, I guess I'd entertain a motion to approve that committee. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? The ayes have it. Uh, at this time, I would entertain a motion to obtain a Sears credit card for the village that so moved. Okay. Second. Uh, is there any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? The ayes have it. Going <laughs> too fast. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go down a little bit. Uh, <laughs> Northeastern Clinton uh, was in the correspondence. I guess they had to drain their pool to do some work, and they refilled with 190,000 gallons of water. Uh, when they refill, though, we, we have a separate meter that they can use for filling the pool. But I, I guess they wanted to do it a little quicker. They used both meters, and uh, they ended up uh, getting billed. Uh, for sewer that they didn't dump back in the sewer. So th they're saying that they think it's approximately 87,000 uh, gallons that they should be credited for on the sewer account, not the water account, but the, just the sewer account. But where do they drain that water? Well, wait, I, I take that back. They the remaining 103,000 gallons, I'm sorry. Well, uh, Woody says they have a holding tank or something that they drain that into. Is that, is that That's ever? That's what it was explained to me. Are we sure that it doesn't end up back in our It system? doesn't end up in our sewer. I would have noticed it. Okay. <laughs> okay. I would have noticed 100,000 gallons. Uh, okay, well that's to entertain a motion to give them credit for 103,383 gallons of wastewater treatment. Can we do that with a stipulation that in the future they use the one as, if it, you know, if it has to happen again, that they use the one that they're supposed to. If they choose to use two, they will pay for the expense. Is that how they're set up, Woody? They do have a separate meter that they yeah, use? Yes, they do. They have a separate meter that fills. Okay, then, yeah, I would suggest that. It may take a little longer, but it would eliminate disputes like this. Mm -hmm. Well, aren't are you only allowed one, one, time adjustment. one time adjustment anyway? Correct. Or, so is, it, or is that different that. for a commercial, an and or a commercial? Do we have any arrangement with them, Woody, to do that? Or? No, they're no different than any other user or commercial user or residential user. It's a one-time adjustment, and then you don't get one again. Then maybe, so remind them of that. They maybe get it when, do you typically send a letter to them stating that you're going to give them a credit and maybe make mention of that in the letter? Mm -hmm. You know, they may apply for a, an adjustment if they have a water meter break or something like that. And that was well, that would be extenuating extenu Extenuating circumstances, correct. What about have they paid for this already, and we're crediting for something that they've already paid? Yes, I don't, I don't think they paid it yet, but they, they had to the end of the month. But mm -hmm. yes. Okay. So it ended up being a credit on their next water bill. I uh, really, we could do it either way. Uh, if it's not paid, I can let them know the adjustment, and they can pay the proper amount. Or I was just wondering if you already had that into the balance of revenues collected, and that you would be. Getting that as a, as a credit. Yes. How often do they do this? Is this the first time that they've done first this? First time our, schools ever done through this. Through our water system. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, they, yeah, they've never had water with yeah. before. So, so I'm. It's a whole I'm, new learning thing with the water up there with us. Make a motion to accept the adjustment uh, with the stipulation reminder that it is a one time adjustment and in the future that you use the one meter for refills. Okay, we have a second for that motion? Second. Uh, is there any just more further discussion? Uh, if not, uh, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed? The ayes have it. Uh, the other item we have is uh, Horizon Heights. Uh, I believe, Mickey, that we need to uh, vote on whether we accept the funding for the, well, it's not a performance bond, but for the, to cover the infrastructure. Security for the infrastructure. Security for the infrastructure. <laughs> Okay, uh, I guess we've all had a chance to review that, and uh, keep, uh, Jim, Jim Cable has given us his, uh, his uh, advice on that, so I would entertain a motion at this time to accept the funding. So moved. Okay, is there any discussion? Or, give me a second. I'll second. Okay, is there any discussion? 
I really got bogged down in all that legal jargon. Is there is there anything in there that says that this thing has to be renewed? This mortgage escrow thing. The only concern I have is that we make sure that that, that thing stays where it should be as far as its accessibility goes. Because I know there were some nightmares that the town had regarding uh, a development project that uh, actually ended up them up in court trying to get back what, what they thought they had in place, but because of some dates that expired related to the type of security. That's the only concern that I have, is how are we going to be watchdogs over this, or do we even need to be? No, that, that would probably be a concern. We'll have to stay on top of that. Okay. Okay. As the, as the infrastructure goes in, there will be a representative from the village here watching the water sewer in road bed because it's going to be done right. I'm not going to run into the situations that we had with this past water installation about 15 years ago when we have taps on the bottom of the pipe, taps on the top of the pipe, taps on a tap. I think it's great we're moving forward. I just want to protect the interests of the village, that's all. Okay, and any further discussion? If not, uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? The ayes have it. Uh, I want to wish to wish Greg a lot of luck. Yeah, I hope, hope he's successful with his uh, project. For sure. I guess we all are. <laughs> yes. Okay. I believe that's all the new business I had. Oh, no, the truck. purchase of the plow truck. Sure. Where's the money going to come from? And the oh. training for the wastewater employees. Where's the money? Water, water, water. Yeah. Uh, okay, well, let's do the wastewater training. Or, it's not wastewater, isn't it? No, it's water. Water, water I, operator. I yes, it's water operator. Water operator training. Okay, for two employees? Correct. Okay. Uh, and the total cost one. of that again? I think I wrote it in the memo. I well, why don't we do, do, do a motion okay. and then we can discuss it? Entertain a motion to send two people to the water training okay. department. So moved. Second. Second. Okay, any discussion? I don't have a total cost of funding here. And did you find a fund that we can pay for this? There is money inside the source of supply power and pumping contractual. That's what money is there? How much? 11000 we're looking at it, it's probably, I think it's a scheme of $10,000 a person, but I don't have the number one permit. I think that's what it was. It was $1,000 each, right? And what's, what's it was $500 per person for the class, and they were looking at their lodging and food. and Do a share room, right? Share room and share travel costs. Yeah, unfortunately, I think we really we need do need to choice. have another person trained. I know the state recommended that. I no, the state says yes. We yeah, have, I, I know it wasn't, we a, have it to. It wasn't <laughs> a recommendation. <laughs> <laughs> now the supply Let's company, what do we nice. normally take out of that account? Do you know? <laughs> what do you do what, what is, normally comes out of that account? Which one's that? 8324. What's the, 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 the supply? Power pumping. That, power. Sounds like power, doesn't it? That sounds like a nice idea. Yeah. Can I ask another question? Is is it feasible for us to consider just one person this year and one person next year? I know it would only save five hundred dollars because you still have the you know the travel expenses and the lodging, but um, what's what's the logic here for two? I was thinking of tra travel travel and lodging expenses. Okay. That was my thought. Okay. And having a backup. No. We really yeah, need because starting we need to be get, we really need to become redundant here. <laughs> I think that there's, then there's you have three people with a D, though, right? Well, in the uh, course of a year, we will have three to four people with a D. Okay. Yeah, I think. And that, that way, we're going to be covering ourselves all the time, and then we have to start on the wastewater training program. And what what account normally would we put training under? Training. Well, that's under, under yeah, it's water. under water normally. Yeah. But we use schooling, you know, schooling account. And we use that up. Yes. Yeah. Is there any discount for sending two people? No. Other than lodging and lodging. travel time. Or mileage was. Or is your 
going anyway. Yeah, it's, it's, it saves some money. That's okay. What about was it 500 bucks if we do them both at once? I know it's not going to help us this year, this budget year for sure, but okay. we'll just have to find the money. Who are you going to send with? Uh, I asked all the employees. I had a sign up list on the wall. Then I went around and personally asked them all, and the only positive responses I received was Mike Rock and Karen Burke. So that's who we're sending? Board's discretion. Yeah, that's the only catch, too. I don't know with, with Wyatt leaving, we may experience somebody who's got a spouse or whatever that may leave, so you. You have to kind of hedge your bets there too, you know, as far as having an extra person. I say it's an extra person, but it's not real. Right? Backup vacations, because you have to have two people on hand. If you've got the person working the weekends, you've got to have the extra person to come in on the weekends. And right now, we're paying time and half because we only have one operator. But so it doesn't really matter if the state says we have to have that. Right. But what I'm saying. So if we were to lose it, say we lose one of our employees. You know that that's a that's licensed. We we're back into square one, so I think we need to send the two. Yeah, there's no guarantee that both people make it to, to uh, a B operator. You may end up somebody just saying so able to get a C. So a C can work under the B. Right. So I guess, yeah, I guess we'll have to try to figure that one out. Now, is there any further discussion on that? Um, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Uh, okay, now we're on to the plow truck. We would entertain a motion to try and obtain uh, the plow truck from Rouse's Point at a price of up to $10,000. So moved. Second. Second. Okay, we'll have some any discussion. Uh, where we're going to get the money. <laughs> yeah, that's the... $24,000 question. Right? What, do you, what do you figure the old truck's worth? The one back there, we'd probably get anywhere from three to five for it. I think there was a... Uh, with my thing with it, that I sent around to all the board members with the truck, I, it was comparable trucks to Rouse's Point yes. and the attachments. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, it's a great price. Yeah, I, I the price agree. isn't a question at all. Um, and, and we know how they, they maintain things. So. Would that go under snow removal, street maintenance, a combination of two accounts? combination of the two. So if we were to... It would be used for snow removal, street right, maintenance. Snow snow I know, snow too. removal. We're down to 731 for equipment. For your street maintenance, you have 24000 For equipment, no. No, contractual no. equipment. No, there's only three and yeah, I mean, we're down to yeah. only $6,000 total and under equipment. Would this be something that would go into contractual? Is that what that is no. for? Yeah, I think so. Contractual is for like fuel, yeah. oil. And we can't even touch those oh. accounts this year. No, they're going uh, to be out of sight this year anyway. The alternative is to look at buying another steel sander at the price of anywhere between six and eight thousand dollars plain steel sander and having to replace it in five years yeah, ago. Yeah, what's the point of that? I mean you're talking another thousand dollars, you know, three to five you can get for the truck. Well this will get us out another five to seven years I guess. Uh, but I mean where do we get the money? <coughs> chips won't pay for it, will it? No chips won't pay for it. <laughs> I can't really write that one off as payment. Well, we we had allocated three thousand for the, the ceiling stuff that we, that we didn't did. do because they recommended I do it the first thing in the spring because the road is going to be all swelled. If I known it was going to rain for forty days and forty nights, I would have probably scheduled something. We can't complain now. We had a beautiful where were, summer. Where were we going to take that three oh. from? We must have. That was for street repairs. Okay. to get the money from. I mean, uh, how, how accurate do you think that our 
our projection on taxes and whatnot since everyone had assessments jump through the roof and I am we going to have a higher revenue than we budgeted for because of that increase? Well, well, those assessments came out after we did our tax levy, so that's probably not going to have an effect. But we'll have an effect until next year? Right. Oh, okay. Our ball is up to three hundred forty million. <laughs> 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 well, I almost think, you know, uh, yeah, there's maybe you could help us out on this one, either, but if, if push came to shove, could we do a loan on a, a BAM? Uh, you know, I, I, I hesitate to pass on something like this that's going to, that we're going to really need. I mean, if we're not going to see the benefit, we're going to pay for it this year, but in the coming years, you can see the benefit from this. Can we apply for one of those credit cards that zero percent interest on you know, purchase for so Six many months, months and then keep rotating it? I mean, I do that. Does anybody else do that? <laughs> Are we allowed to do things like that for the village? <laughs> I mean, what we're paying for these other things is outrageous. I mean, there are interest rates that are just absurd that no one's paying these days. Well, that's right. that, I, I'll tell you, I think that's a good idea, as, as long as we can cushion it with the, the three to 5000 that we could get for the other truck. I mean, are we being realistic with that? You know, cause if, we could, if we could get, let's say, four, then we're talking six that we'd actually have to come up with and figure out. And how long will Ross Point hold this for us while we their new truck, funding? Their new truck will be in the 1st of November. What kind of shape is our old truck in? Should we keep that one and get rid of the newer one? You were talking about keeping Ross's points and get rid of our... No, I'm saying the one you just repaired the box on. No, that one's staying. We're keeping that one. Why? At the 2000. All right. And we have a, a 92 back there. So then that begs the question, why do we need this 89? Because we're getting it for the sander. They won't sell the sander separately? No. One unit. So we're paying 10000 for a sander. Really? Yeah. But a truck Why don't we a sell lot. the old truck and buy a brand new stainless steel sander? We can try truck. that. I'm and just then we only got one truck, though. Yeah, that's risky for <coughs> us. <coughs> just trying to explore all the options. I'm, I have no problem with that. I, I'm just presenting an idea. Yeah, no, it's a good idea. But we really can't wait on this. Right. Uh, can we make it with stipulations that... Uh, yeah, a million ideas. Uh, uh, yeah. We'll buy it and then we'll sell the truck, just keep the sander. That's an idea, too. But the 89, what value is that truck going to be? It's as in good a shape as what he says look it at is. The look at the paper that you attached to that. Right, true. Here's an 89. And they I just we don't, have to, we don't have to get that far out. I guess we have to just decide if we can if well, we want to try and... Do this or well, we've got to really have we an have answer on funding now. Yes. That's well, we're going to we have to take out a loan. Pull it out of well, if that's what we have to do, I mean, Our other we're not going to have this opportunity later. Or we're going to... I would recommend if we don't do that, we need to look at the funding to purchase a new standard. Right. Uh, we're, we're kind of over a barrel here. Oh. What do you think, Ken? I think we need to need to look into the cost of loan the interest and yeah. get back to us. Okay. Very low interest for little communities. Zero, Zero if possible. Zero if possible. Yeah, I, I think where we have to I, I just don't want to see what happened with the sludge press and we ended up missing out and that's well, probably we did on that. We just got outbid. Right. Yeah, we well, didn't this, do an inter municipal thing. Yes. Mm -hmm. If we act on it oh, now, right, we gotcha. right, 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 gotcha. right, sorry. Well, I mean, we can roll the dice and gamble, and, and in the process, one of you, your job is to get a loan of under 2%. <laughs> <laughs> on an 89 okay, truck. Okay, look at me. On an 89 <laughs> truck, yeah. <laughs> 
notebook. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> get one of those credit cards. I see a lot of those on the side of the road. <laughs> Can you put it on a Sears card? <laughs> the other alternative is I'll, no, I'll source state contract good. pricing for Sanders. Why are those that you... With the price of stainless steel and oh, steel, oh, yeah. it's going nuts. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not those right now. Or any of those that you had, you know, stainless steel, where we should... I don't have stainless steel sanders. A couple of them didn't even have sanders in there. Yeah. Okay, so I make a motion that we... Um, we have a motion. Oh. Is, is, is okay. That's the discussion. <laughs> we roll the dice and pray to God. Money <laughs> will start growing again on the back tree. Okay. Is there any further discussion? Uh, if not, all in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? The ayes have it. Okay. At this time, I would entertain a motion to go into uh, executive session and discuss some. Oh wait, questions. I have one more. Do you have one more? Yes. Okay that I forgot to put on my thing. Um, and Donna can go into more detail with this. Our fax machine is down. We currently have a rental, that not a rental, but they're loaning to us to purchase. Um, and, you know, one of these fancy salesmen came up and, you know, was trying to sell us a Cadillac for replacements. And what his suggestion was for was for this digital copier printer that has everything. It scans, it faxes, um, it it will even he's throwing in a program that um, Juanita could print all her um, what do you call them warrants so well, we, we can all network basically into the uh, copier so we can print off the copier instead of having all of our printers you know using the, the save on the yeah, one central printer yeah, <coughs> yeah. we figured I figured we're spending we spent about four hundred and fifty dollars or something cartridges yes we did um, <coughs> this year um, and I did call him today to see what it would cost to get our fax machine fixed. Uh, that was here before I got here, so it's got to be at least five or six years old. And he called back and said it was going to be $208.32. And knew that's probably about a $500 fax machine uh, for the one we have now. Um, so what he was suggesting is that we go and we um, consolidate all our equipment. You know, we've got the copier, we've got the fax. Um, we don't have a scanner. This way we could scan stuff in. Um, my thinking, of course, we have no money at this stage of the game. Uh, but my thoughts in, in, in this area is, one, we, we spend a ton of money on paper. And a lot of stuff that she copies to all of us, we really could just take a quick look at it and say, okay, thank you. I don't need to waste that paper because 99% of it we put in the garbage, correct? Um, our our faxing is costing us how much a month are we guessing? The fa well, you have to pay for the phone line. It's probably right. about seventy, sixty to seventy dollars a month. Just to have that line. Right. And then, you know, the cost of placing those lines, what we do is scan the material and email it off free of charge. You know, right. so well, that we're that. yeah, we're saving a lot of money there. There's a lot of cost effective things we can do to consolidate. Um, on some of this equipment that we have, and then it's antiquated. Um, the long and short of it all is this machine whistles and dances and does it all for you. Um, and what we're paying right now per copy is, uh, let me find it here. Throw, jump in if you know it. I'm not sure, was it a seven or eight cents? Seven, yeah, eight, eight cents, eight tenths of a cent? Yeah, eight cents per copy is what we're paying now for extras. So last year we went over the amount of what our, our maintenance agreement was, which ended up costing us six hundred and twenty three dollars. And the maintenance agreement is like five hundred dollars. So it, it's based on a certain amount of copies. And if you go over that it's like leasing a vehicle, you have to pay for extra for the copies. So they're saying with this model, the copy cost now is going to be point oh one two five cents per copy because it's more sophisticated, it's not so cumbersome and you don't the price of this ma machine will include all cartridges, all maintenance, anything that we need to do this. It's a rental. We are going to be renting it, and if we choose at, at four and three quarters year, the, the lease is a five-year period, if at four and three quarters of that year we decide we want to get the next Whistle Dixie that's out there, um, they give you a trade-in value on it and basically pretty much wash out what interest you've paid on this machine. 
Um, I think he's applying. We just renewed our contract with him on this property, and I think he's going to be applying that. He will apply the full machine. amount that we paid in July for our maintenance company off the price of this um, for renting it. So the low and the whole of the whole darn thing, it comes down to be. Draw my calculations. Yeah, uh, with the state contract, the retail and, and taking off of everything, the state contract brings it down to $6,433. Retail, it's an it's $11,500 machine. But we would be paying... Um, it was 162 or 6 162 per month to lease this machine. And we're going to start off by saving with the fax machine, that line alone, $70 off of that. I mean, you... you and the cartridges. Right. And it was, this was a couple of weeks ago we talked about it, and I, right. I would have tried to reread my notes if I, uh, we were going to talk about it tonight. But it, it sounded like a lot of money when he first started talking, and that was a whole, oh, wait a minute. But once we started figuring the difference between, it only was only like about $800 Different, Sammy, something like that, yep. between, from what, um, well, you could probably explain it from your notes better, because mm -hmm. it was it was minimal amount of money, but than um, what we're doing now, right? And it can the emails can come or the faxes can come to my computer, right to our computer. essential computer, Beautiful. so that way you know now you get a lot of that junk that comes on. You're wasting paper. Right. You won't have to have any of that. You can actually print out whatever you want. Any faxes that are pertinent, um, other than you can get rid of that kind of stuff that you don't need. So. And what I was thinking too is that if on a weekly basis Donna downloaded to us some of this mail that we don't need, <laughs> you know, we know the stuff that needs to be printed up, and we know the stuff that's just an FYI for us to read. That can be sent to our emails and save the village a lot of money and us carrying all this paper around and then throwing it out and you know wasting the trees. Um, so in, in paper alone, the savings is going to be astronomical to move to this one piece of equipment. <coughs> if it breaks down, if anything happens to it, they have a loaner here and a heartbeat for us. Well, what's the cost per month? Yeah, I mean, that's the same question you were going to ask. Okay. Well, we're paying now versus Just a quick, quick yes. question. I deal a lot with data. Okay. Two things. The more electronic you get, the more paper you will have. That's my experience. But the other thing is when you start scanning documents and emailing to people's homes, if you don't have a high-speed line, it will take a long time for documents. I'm, I have a high-speed thing, and I know that from experience. But I just got a scanner at work, and it will take, when you start talking, you start talking documents, you're talking megabytes and gigabytes, and it will take, to be realistic, you really need to look at it. Maybe a way to even consider me doing it is transferring it to disk and giving people disk. Mm -hmm. burn, if you have a disk burner here, but just, it sounds wonderful, but if everybody here, if you, if you don't have Roadrunner service or high-speed internet, it's, it can just gum up everything. And you can open a document, and it can literally take you an hour or two hours to open that up when you start scanning documents. Just mm -hmm. be warned about that. I mean, yeah, especially when you start getting the Adobe documents. You know, it just it is. But one way you might want to do it though is is just because CD-ROMs are cheap now. If you don't, if right. you get if you get ones that aren't are not rewritable, just recordable, you can put stuff to a burn. If you have a disc burner in there, you can just put you can. And it'll take you a little time to just hand out the disc to everybody, and then everybody can just open it up. And when you start emailing stuff, especially a lot of documents, mm -hmm. you are taking up a huge amount of memory. And to look at those things, it can take you forever. And I have my computer. And I got a big government computer ISP line, and it. It locked my computer for two hours, and it was a guy just a couple pictures. He said, "Oh yeah, don't read that." <laughs> Thank you very much. You know, but just keep well, that in mind. Um, I had another note too. And speaking about systems, you may want to upgrade our operating system here from Millennium to XP if we're going to start doing that. Millennium does have problems. A lot of problems. That might be if we have to pick and choose. That's probably what we need to do other than a copier because we, we've got to get our payroll uh, on Windows program and we did put our accounting on it but we have the me program and uh, it, it was a really a, a, a lot of problems getting that thing loaded so anyway. that would be my thought you know really and think about that but uh, we really need to upgrade into a get out of Amen. the Millennium program. Kim, did you, go ahead. Did you have a question? No. 
Uh, the only thing I would have to say from this is me personally, that's a lot of paper. Hmm. But I can stand at my island in the morning while I'm drinking my coffee before work. I am not going to sit in front of my computer for three hours mm -hmm. and read email when I sit at a desk for eight hours plus a day at work. The other thing that's hard to do is who's going to decide what we get and what we don't get. I know that's, a that's lot always of a, source work, yeah. of, a source of uh, And I don't have is, five feet. <laughs> it shouldn't be, it, in my opinion, it shouldn't be well, your, your decision <laughs> what, what you copy to us and what you don't. It should be... It never has been. Yeah, that was just always copy a it thing all. with Janice. Everything gets copied. Yeah. I'm not saying that's right, but, no, then, but then the onus comes on you yeah. to decide what is comes across to us and what goes in the garbage. Well, you know what would be a big saver? I guess from this discussion, I hadn't thought of it before, but uh, some of these items, we could just have a common pile that we could look through it. If there's something that you want to bring home or you find mm -hmm. of interest, we could make it an extra copy. But I, I noticed from the stack that we had this month, I mean, we've got a big huge. stack of papers this high. It, it really doesn't make sense to make a copy for everybody. Well, you're talking five weeks this month, too, though, so. Yeah, you know, but still, I mean, uh, yeah, but there's a fair amount of items that, I know. Are, are not a, that, that we don't really need to take home with us. I, I agree. And we could, you know, we could just have a pile in here or a separate file where we could just look at them. Like I said, if there's something of interest, we can make an additional copy. If it's not, we could just leave it because, yeah, you, I can't remember who said it, but you're correct. A lot of this stuff ends up in the basket. Mm -hmm. and well, the board will have to decide because we don't, again, we're, um, right now we have a system that's checked off so we know what's been copied and so mm -hmm. forth. Because that was a problem in the past. People were complaining, well, I didn't get this copy. You know, so and we, it kind of works so we know who's got what when you have the certain little marks on the paper. If that's not a concern for the board, then, you know. Well, if we had a common pile, I think. Right. Well, you've got the correspondence that we definitely all get copied on. Mm -hmm. You know, and that definitely would go in. But, you know, the generic of, you know, all these different classes or. Yeah, that's um, what I was going to say is um, your. Um, uh, little certificates of the completion and you know the minutes of the legislature and the minutes of the town. Um, but, uh, to get back to the issue at hand though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, so the issue is Donna had called me in because their their scan the fax is down and so this guy was coming in so she just wanted to have someone on the board there and since I'm available I came in. Um, so once he explained it all it made sense to switch to this machine as opposed to buying yet another piece of equipment and none of it working with our computers. But our computer system is so antiquated that it has to be addressed. Well, I think I think maybe Donna's correct that we should look at upgrading our computer system first before we... But right now we have a fax machine that is not ours that they want a decision on today what we're going to do with they're taking that fax machine back. Well, we so can, they can repair it. It's, it'll be $200 right. to repair it. Now whether you want buy a new one for probably two hundred dollars. Well, we looked at those before, and <coughs> the problem is with those types of machine, they're not. They're not it's like the right. one we have now. They, the the loaner. I'm sorry, but it's half the machine we have. It's not a. You almost need a commercial grade fax machine here, mm -hmm. and those are for basically home use. So for that type of machine, you want to spend two hundred dollars. You want to put another three amp, three hundred, and get a brand new machine, similar to what we have. So. Who do we deal with for all our office products? Usually law pros. Well, I shouldn't say that. The last printer, that Juanita's printer we got from Eastside Computer, he had a better price than anybody else, so. We don't buy that much equipment, mm -hmm. you know, so. Mm -hmm. Well, that, could we look into that for the next meeting? Because I, I'm not really comfortable with, I don't have enough information right. as to what's out there. That maybe there's other options. I don't know how. It sounds like something that came up today, yesterday, or whatever. And yeah, it was a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, and then I, was on top. Right. I mean, I know uh, money's tight, and we we really the computers need more addressing, I think, than the copier, um, because, like I said, we we got to make a decision on pro the payroll program, installing the payroll program in Windows, and. Anyway. I just had another thought. All my UFPOs, underground facilities, come in by fax. Mm -hmm. 
I have only one company that notifies me by email, and that's out of all of them. So we definitely need a fax machine. Well, that, yeah, that, not, that no, fax, that. yeah, that does it all. We're not saying no for a fax machine. No. Obviously, you can't run a business without them. That's, that's yeah, and, yeah, and, my, and my biggest concern with that is just, will, will that operate on Millennium? Uh, not like it. Uh, they set it up. They do all the programming that's necessary to our systems, to whatever our system is. So, all right. And in, in one more question, then I'll drop it too. But in your analysis of this one hundred and sixty-two dollars a month, yes. Can you can you justify an offsetting total expense of whatever one sixty-two times twelve is that would balance out to this amount? Meaning, are we spending that much a month that we could justify that? Well, that based on what we're spending and what we would say, right? Yeah. Right. No, not the full 162 we could write off. Close, because between the phone and what we're, we're paying extra for extra copies, because the copy extra charge is so high, mm -hmm. um, it really almost comes to a wash. It, it, it comes like within a couple hundred dollars of a wash total for the year. So, but I, we, you know, we can do it up in detail, and I apologize, she just reminded me of it at the meeting tonight. I had it with me. Um, we did meet before, and then I ended up being out of town last week. So, I unless it's something we want to put in the budget for next year, I really don't know how much we have left for equipment and the clerk and the and the treasurer's budget. If it's you know, but we might be better to because if we do put the payroll system on, that's going to be probably about six or seven hundred dollars. That's about what it costs for the accounts receivable one that we put on. So. Whatever we have left in there, we'll probably have to go for that. I'm guessing. Okay, well, let's come up with a game plan for. Uh, the, I guess this me meeting was late, so the next right. one won't be as long. So, okay. if you have a game plan for next meeting, that would probably be a good idea. Okay, at this time, I would entertain a motion to uh, go into executive session and discuss a couple of personnel issues. So moved. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Aye. Have it. Thanks for coming, Todd. Good luck with your, your campaign. Throw my chair. Yeah, throw your chair. <laughs> <laughs> oh. See you, Mickey. I'm sure you.